so good afternoon everybody i thank the organizers and uh, the entire team of uh, api west bengal for allowing me to speak something on the role of vitamin c in immunity this will be the table of contents i'll be going to giving an overview of the immune system and the vitamin c along with the importance in the immunity deficiency and role of supplements if any the immune system the immune system can be viewed as consisting of three levels we all know this the anatomical and physiological barriers are the first line of defense innate immunity and adaptive immunity remains the second line of defense this flow chart shows the immunity the acquired immunity and the innate immunity in a nutshell the acquired immunity comprises of we all know the t cells and the b cells innate immunity the physical barriers and phagocytes are the most important component of the innate immunity and the complement is included both in the b cell as well as b cell that is the uh, classical pathway is included in the b cell or acquired immunity whereas the alternate pathway is included in the innate immune system these are the cells these are a few of the cells which are involved in the innate immune process here we know that with the innate immune process is very important one of the cell is nk cell along with that we have the dendritic cells we have the endothelial cells the monocytes or macrophages the mast cells eosinophils basophils also the gamma delta t cells these are only a few of the uh, cells which are involved but in actual practice we have a host many number of cells which are involved in the innate immune process similarly if we think about the adaptive immune system which is comparatively a newer immune process we find that the t cells and b cells are the most important components of the adaptive immune system but the t cells and b cells they don't function on their own they have their own interactive response interactions their, their response is always interactions and with with along with the um, innate immune system the adaptive immune system functions so as to have the intact immune status immune status of the body this is again just a, over an overview of the different components which help in preserving our intact immune function any defects of any of these will cause in a dysfunction of the immune system so all said and done where does the nutrition come in picture of the in immunity this slide may help us to know this it might be a microcyte deficiency like proteins and calories whereas the malnutrition is probably the most common immune deficiency in the world the microcyte deficiency which will be our uh, highlight of our discussion today which includes elements and vitamins and also overnutrition so if we look at the micronutrients which are important from immune system point of view nearly all the micronutrients are important but amongst them the iron zinc copper selenium and the vitamins are probably most more important and we actually are today more concerned with the one of the vitamins here that is the vitamin c vitamin c has a very interesting timeline it was described that uh, the disease scurvy caused by vitamin c was described in way back in 1550 bc and subsequently hippocrates described the symptoms but it the credit goes to british naval surgeon james lind who described the diff, the link between scurvy and the citrus fruits then there are many scientists who progressively contributed their own contributions so that in 1932 british chemist walter howarth was able to synthesize artificially the vitamin c and in future subsequently years it was found that vitamin c was associated with two nobel prizes which was uh, given in 1937 so what is the speciality of vitamin c vitamin c or the anti scorbutic vitamin is having can the speciality is that it cannot be synthesized by the humans because of the fact that human lack the glucolactone oxidase and so this vitamin the vitamin c needs to be taken in adequate amounts to prevent its deficiency so what are the fact what are the uh, factors affecting the plasma levels like any other nutrients the plasma levels depend upon the dietary intake absorption 
redistribution, metabolism, and the excretion. The body stores, if we see, the total book content of vitamin C ranges from 300 milligram when at near the scurvy levels to about 2 gram. So it is not that it's stored in very big amount. High levels of vitamin C are maintained intracellularly and within the tissues, whereas lesser levels are found in the extracellular fluids. The forms. Vitamin C exists in two forms. The ascorbic acid, which is a reduced form and it's more predominant form and the dehydroascorbic acid, which is the oxidized form. Absorption is via the two um, receptors and peak plasma concentration reaches around two to three hours after the intake of vitamin C. The ascorbic acid actually is converted into dehydroascorbic acid and subsequently taken up intracellularly by GLUT1 or GLUT3 receptors. Again, it is converted to ascorbic acid and this is known as ascorbic acid recycling. This recycling is inhibited, is affected by higher oxi or oxidant stress like in smokers and so these are smokers are predisposed to vitamin C deficiency. There are many enzymatic cofactor activities of vitamin C. A big list is given here, like increases collagen, reduces hypoxia inducible factor, reduces DNA methylation, increases catecholamines, and so on and so forth. We all know about the deficiency of vitamin C causes this, like COX-2 here. We, when we teach our undergraduate or postgraduates, we know that we say the COX-2 here or uh, splinter hemorrhages or perifollicular hemorrhages, periorbital edema or scurvy. But I'm not here to discuss about these. These are well known to this August gathering. I will be discussing something about this, the vitamin C in immune process. We all know that immune cells are extremely prone to oxidation. Might be because of the high concentration of the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And so antioxidants have to be there in adequate amounts so, so as to maintain the antioxidant oxidant balance, which is crucial to maintain the integrity of the cell. Also, it maintains the function of the cell. If we look at the vitamin C and its core importance to the immune system, this table probably summarizes it all. The epithelial barriers, the importance here is that vitamin C enhances the collagen synthesis, protects the, against the reactive oxygen species induced damage, enhances keratinocyte differentiation, enhances fibroblast proliferation, and shortens time to wound healing. If we look at the phagocytes, like neutrophils and macrophages, we find that it acts, vitamin C acts as antioxidant and electron donor. They enhance motility and chemotaxis, enhances phagocytosis, enhances microbial killing, facilitates apoptosis and decreases the necrosis and also decreases the netosis. I will be discussing about this netosis, something new uh, after within a few slides. And if we look about the B and T lymphocytes, they enhance the differentiation and proliferation and also they enhance the antibody levels. Inflammatory mediators, like more, they modulate the cytokine production and they decrease the histamine levels. This is in a nutshell about the function of vitamin C and the immune, on, the, on the immune system. If we look at few of these, like the role of vitamin C in innate immunity, we'll see that leukocytes accumulate vitamin C to much higher extent as compared to the that of the, the serum, maybe 50 to 100 fold times higher. And as the dietary intake increases to around 100 milligram per day, the concentration of vitamin C in the leukocytes increase. Here, I would like to highlight the fact that according to the ICMR, dietary, daily dietary requirement of vitamin C is around 40 milligram per day. But in pregnant ladies, it is around 60 milligram per day. In lactating mother, it is around 80 milligram per day. And in infants, it comes to around 25 milligrams per day. Also, vitamin C helps to regenerate the cellular membrane, cell, cellular and membrane antioxidants like glutathione and vitamin E. So vitamin E regeneration actually is dependent upon vitamin C. This is very important slide, which shows the role of vitamin C in the phagocytic process. Vitamin C, here you see, it enhances the chemotaxis and enhances the migration of neutrophil in response to chemotaxis. Also, it enhances the phagocytic process of the neutrophils and, and in this way stimulates the killing. It enhance, increases the reactive oxygen species release and so the killing of microbes is increased. After killing, 
the neutrophils are engulfed by macrophage in a process known as apoptosis all these are increased by the vitamin c availability of vitamin c here of those of the few uh, neutrophils which are not uh, engulfed and apot uh, uh, don't undergo apoptosis by the macrophages they undergo a special type of death which is known as netosis what is netosis actually net indicates neutrophil extracellular traps so these are few of the substances which are released from the neutrophils when they die and get denatured like uh, the neutrophil dnas the enzymes and all these these released substances from the dead neutrophils they cause uh, damage to the surrounding tissues and so this the this is evident by in the present that in the presence of severe sepsis the level of the neutrophil dnas rise in the serum so that all these causes damage to the peripheral tissues and vitamin c by its availability increases the apoptosis and reduces this netosis or and the damage to the surrounding tissues that's what i just explained vitamin c deficiency delays the neutrophil apoptosis so that neutrophils fails to undergo morphological changes not recognized of phagocytosis by macrophages and the necrosis of the neutrophils and the causes surrounding tissue damage and the cell death now let us see about the adaptive immune system b and t lymphocytes are the main elements of the adaptive immune system vitamin c influences on t lymphocytes that it helps in the development maturation and differentiation of human t cells and protects the cells from oxidative damage on b lymphocytes they help in the development maturation and differentiation of b cells and also they help in the antibody production all said and done what is the role of vitamin c deficiency and what is the link of vitamin c deficiency in genetics <clears throat> indians are more prevalent in vitamin c deficiency might be due to the tobacco use biomass fuel the way we quick cook the aging population and the genetic makeup our genetic makeup might be we are more prone to deficient of the influence of vitamin c demographical factors show that male are more developed likely to develop vitamin c deficiency than female and comorbid conditions in the elderly increase the chances of developing vitamin c deficiency so vitamin c deficiency is highly prevalent in india in elderly population vitamin c deficiency was found to be around 74% in north india and around 46% in south india and as the age increases the deficiency increases in adults around 20% of male population suffers from vitamin c deficiency and in contrast to female who are deficient who are around 13% of female who are deficient if we look at the dietary stat, dietary factors we see we will find that cooking vegetables and fruits can reduce their vitamin c levels to as much as 40% and here comes the importance of supplemental usage in vitamin c deficiency smoking smoking and biomass fuel causes immense uh, uh, stress on the cells because they create oxidative stress which can cause damage to the cells and vitamin c is used by the cell to combat this and so these patients are chronically vitamin c deficient environmental factors in india factors such as harsh climate and high level of pollution negatively impact the vitamin c status of the body now the genetics genetic variants like also influence the metabolism of vitamin like any other metabolism or any other process, any other influence of genetics on any other uh, metabolic process haptoglobin we all know it is a hemoglobin binding antioxidant it is a major factor which influences the vitamin c levels three variants of haptoglobin are there hp11 hp21 and hp22 indians are more of the hp22 variant and hp22 has decreased the ability to bind hemoglobin resulting in increased oxidation of vitamin c so indians are more prone to develop vitamin c deficiency so what happens on in what is the impact of infection on vitamin c status both acute and chronic infection causes adverse impact on the micronutrient status of the body 
nearly all the micronutrients are depleted when the patient is having suffering from chronic uh, vitamin uh, chro uh, chronic infection or even acute infection they include vitamin c deficiency a or e deficiency and even deficiency of zinc copper selenium and iron uh, if we look at the comorbidities and vitamin c levels we'll see the diabetes causes deficiency of many of the important uh, micronutrients which include vitamin c so is the hypertension hypertension patients have impaired endogenous and exogenous antioxidant defense mechanism and have more oxidative stress and more uh, virus more reactive oxygen species are produced so again here also the deficiency of vitamin c zinc and folic acid occurs when the patient is in a chronic hypertensive state again the cardiovascular disease is the same thing cardiovascular diseases and deficiencies also causes uh, increased oxidative stress impaired skeletal muscle function impaired myocardial contraction and deficiency of vitamin c a d selenium or magnesium calcium iodine so nearly most of the micronutrient deficiency occurs when the patient is having a cardiovascular ailment for a prolonged period of time so we all know about this the sources of vitamin c and these are the sources which need to be replenished and substituted to all these patients like cardiovascular suffering from cardiovascular ailments diabetes hypertension so that they don't suffer from chronic vitamin c deficiency now two more slides one is the role of supplements supplements well vitamin c we are as we have discussed now is a water soluble vitamin and its store is very less around 2 grams so it is essential to ensure adequate intake by diet on an everyday basis and if it is not possible or sometimes it is seen that due to our due to various practices like cooking practices due to consumption of smoke due to smoking or biomass fuel or staying in pollutant areas the vitamin c uh, requirements don't meet the meet the uh, 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 is not met by the dietary supplements in that Shilkat, cases shilkat you have uh, to wind up one more minute madam last eta pore ekta slide chilo okay 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 so we need to supplement vitamin c as much as possible so as i told chronic diseases like diabetes hypertension cardiac conditions reduces the vitamin c stores in the body predisposing these patients to vitamin c deficiency a regular intake of vitamin c supplements can thus help meet body's vitamin c requirements and prevent the deficiencies so to summarize vitamin c deficiency is highly prevalent in india across the diverse age groups various factors can reduce the vitamin c status of the body including the chronic diseases smoking poor dietary intake etc and it's extremely important for proper functioning of the immune system and its deficiency can impact the immune system adversely a diet rich of vitamin c should be there to meet body's daily requirement and in special circumstances when the diet dietary supplementation is not possible supplements to vitamin c play a crucial role in offsetting any imbalance created in body's vitamin c stores thank you all for your patience Thank you.